was kind enough to talk about the book, How We Die, that changed my life in the early 90s from being a busy surgeon in a busy university community to suddenly being proclaimed an oracle on the subject of death, which I didn't realize I had spent my life thinking about and actually planning to write this book until after I had written it. And let me, let me tell you what I mean. I was born in an immigrant family, and the legend of the family was about my grandfather and two uncles who came from a small village in what is now Belarus and who developed tuberculosis in the early 20th century, as so many immigrants did on the Lower East Side, and died before my grandmother and the girls in the family could come over. Uh, Two, one of those girls died in childbirth, another of those girls died in her 30s of Bright's disease. I had a brother who was stillborn. I had another brother who died at the age of three. Uh, death, without my really acknowledging it, was in the legend and lore of my family. And my mother died of colon cancer when I was 11 after a very prolonged course. And I realized looking back on it, obviously, that this is what drove me to medicine. It wasn't the fear of death. It was having control over disease. If I were to become a doctor, I could stop the disease that had decimated my family over the course of three, actually, three generations. And so there I was. I went into a surgical residency, developed the usual busy surgical practice. I'd been at it for about 35 years. And one day, my secretary, not one of the nurses, my secretary walked into the examining room where I was just finishing up a physical examination of a new patient, and she whispered in my ear, secretary, they never walk into examining rooms. They're not supposed to do that. She whispered in my ear, there's a phone call. I think you'll want to take this. And I said, who's it from? She said, the magic words. She said, it's a literary agent. <laughs> well, I had written a book on the history of medicine, and so I had a little bit of taste of the writing life and how much fun it can be. And I finished the examination. I was actually near the very end. I mean, it was literally near the end. I was at the end. I was doing the, the rectal exam. <laughs> <laughs> so I slipped out. And <laughs> I slipped out of the room. And I went to speak to this fellow on the phone who introduced himself to me. And he said that he had an idea for a book, an original idea. And he had been speaking to some editors in New York, and they knew about some of the previous writing I'd done, and then my name kept coming up, and he said, I thought I'd try you. What is the book to be about? He said, do you know that there is no book, either for the medical profession or for the laity, that actually talks about the details of how people die of coronary disease, cancer, old age, uh, dementia, whatever, and I said, there must be lots of such books. That was our first conversation. He said, well, try me just over the next couple of days, visit some libraries. And I did. I went to the Yale Medical Library, nothing for students, nothing for house officers or faculty. And of course, in the New Haven Public Libraries, it was the same thing. So lo and behold, there was really nothing available. And here we were, uh, near the beginning of the hospice movement, near the beginning of the growth of bioethics, uh, the beginning, only the beginning of the awareness of how badly we treat people at the end of life. And yet, if you wanted to know what actually happens to someone with long-standing malignancy, there was no way to find out what that person feels what his or her doctors feel, what they go through physically, but also emotionally, primarily physically, though there wasn't any such thing. So I took him up on it, and I wrote this book. 
took me exactly a year. It took me three, I took a year's leave of absence, and it took me 365 days. I never spoke to him for the whole, he had no idea what I was going to do with this book, and neither did I. But I found to my astonishment that the book wrote itself. And as many of you know, that this book was, was an extraordinary sensation because it really was true that here we were at the beginnings of our discussions of death and dying and the way we care for people and their spiritual needs and their physical needs and nobody knew how it happened. Doctors had to learn it by being at bedsides over and over and over again because nobody taught it in the classroom. So after that, of course, I became absorbed with the topic and became active in a number of organizations. And uh, when I would visit a foreign country, which you do when you, when you write a book, I you know, study the ways in which death was handled in those countries so differently in, in every country, in every culture. And uh, I had always been, well, not always, but for about 10 years involved uh, in matters medical in China, and I had an opportunity to study it there, now with this new focus. And so I've spent all of these 16 years since the publication of the book watching to see what effect all of the talking was having, not just my talking, because you know there were many, many, many books after this point about death and dying, about the compassionate care of the dying, about emotional needs, spiritual needs, physical needs, uh, the needs of the family. And when the book had been out 15 years, my publisher, uh, Alfred A. Knopf Company, contacted me and said, you know, it's been 15 years. Uh, why don't you write a follow-up? Why don't you write, not a new book, but a coda, a, a new ending, a new summary? What's going on now? Have things changed? So I spent close to a year uh, visiting places uh, that I had visited before, talking to people I had met along the way, physicians, nurses, hospice workers, uh, members of the clergy, aides who I had run into. And primarily, though, I was talking to people very much like myself, younger than myself, because almost everybody's younger than myself now, uh, and finding out what had happened primarily to medicine with all of the press from the general public, all of the demand for compassionate care of the dying, all of the need for knowledge, what had happened in 15 years in America. And I wrote this coda, this final chapter, this new summary, and I want to tell you what my findings were. 